Hey guys, this is Dr. Ahmed Terrigan. I'm an endocrinologist and a diabetes educator. Today we are talking about We Go V. We Go V. So, this is a new weight loss drug, but here's the trick it's the same molecule as a diabetes drug. Let's talk about it now. Hi guys, thank you for watching. Uh, quickly, I have a quiz for you in the description below. So after you watch this video, take the quiz, answer the questions. The more questions you answer correctly, the higher the chance and one in three will win a chapter from my book. It's gonna be delivered electronically to you, a real chapter from my The Ultimate Diabetes book. So go ahead, finish the video, take the quiz and win. Okay guys, so this is not an advertisement, okay? It's new, it is uh, creating a lot of noise and I'm gonna talk about it because I feel like I have to, I'm a doctor, come on. All right, so because if you don't hear from me, you're gonna hear from someone. You better hear from me so that you can get the right information. So, what is it for? It's for weight loss. Why there's a lot of noise? Because their studies are pretty damn good for when it comes to weight loss. I know, I know, you're gonna be like, Doc, you know, just do keto and, um, you know, just don't eat food, you'll be okay. Well, if that was the case, there would be no obesity, right? So preaching is to a point works, and after some point, you're like, you know what? You gotta do something, okay? So if medication is needed, sometimes it is needed. Not the first choice, not the last choice, but you need to know your options, right? So. It is a molecule called semaglutide. So semaglutide is the same molecule in Ozempic. Now you probably heard of Ozempic either on TV or you're already on it or somebody's on it. So it is a well-known medication for diabetes and it has been the strongest pretty much medication in terms of helping diabetes. And the way semaglutide works is that it is an intestinal hormone. So they basically mimic that intestinal hormone that is broken down by the body very quickly. So you eat and that intestinal hormones really get released and that makes the insulin in the body and then disappears because, you know, it is designed to take care of that food ingestion. Now, in overweight individuals and in diabetics, that mechanism is broken. So in a way that they're either not responsive to their hormone anymore or they're just not making enough of it. So as a result, you know, scientists come and say, okay, how are we gonna, you know, defeat that? Well, we can make a molecule and we can prevent that uh, molecule that is very similar or almost the same molecule as the intestinal hormone that our body makes. But instead of letting that broken down, it sticks around, okay? So as a result, you know, the action of that hormone continues. Now, one of the most important action of that hormone is that it, it keeps you the sense of satiety. So it makes you feel full. It's, there are receptors in your gastrointestinal system all over your body, brain. The GLP-1 receptors are pretty much everywhere and in the satiety center as well. So there is direct relationship, you can tell, between the food we are ingesting and the rest of our body and the hormones released as a result of the, the food we are eating. When you take the molecule like this, like a semaglutide, you basically feel like you are constantly in a fed state. So you feel like you're, you don't need to eat. Isn't that great? I mean, it's great. Well, we're gonna talk about side effects, right? So you're gonna be like, it cannot be that great, <laughs> right? There are, of course, downsides to it, and we'll come to that. Now, the reason that they changed the name, not Trying, they're not trying to do a marketing trick or anything like that. What they, the reason they changed the name is because it is a different molecule and it's studied differently. It is not studied in diabetic population. It is studied in normal population. And actually, in one of the difficult populations that we deal with every day uh, is like the 45, 50-year-old middle-aged women trying to transition to menopause and their metabolism just boom, hits the wall, and they are like so desperate. I feel so bad for them every day in my clinic. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. It's just, that's the way it is, you know? Like, I can't, I can't just tell you to stop eating the rest of your life. Now, 
The thing is, with this, they increase the dose. But what happens in a lot of medications, you start a medication and people get used to it, right? And then if the maximum dose indicated in the label, you cannot go any higher than that, and you don't know if it is safe or not to go higher than that, then you don't go high, you know, higher dose. So, so with these, what they did, they did safety studies on thousands and thousands of people to make sure that even over a year, the weight loss happened the weight loss was maintained and people tolerated in a safe manner. So 80 to 90% of people, I think 85% of people were able to complete this huge, humongous, very long study. And they had, of course, double blind, you know, some people had placebo, some people did not have placebo, some people didn't have the real, real thing. And they wanted to see how much these people are losing weight. And they even at some point stopped people from using this and they switched them over and to see what happens, right? So with Wigovi, people lost a lot of weight. So around 15% of their body weight. So 15% is a huge number to me and not just losing it and maintaining it. Now you're gonna be like, Doc, you know, how do you maintain? Do you have to stay on this medication forever? Well, in a way, unless you, in time, you decided that you don't want that, the bad habits that you used to have, that you used to crave those ice cream, you used to crave those candies, and you don't crave it anymore because you're on this drug, uh, and we're gonna do an unboxing in a second, so I'm just, just not holding this, I'm gonna show you the real thing. But the, the bottom line is you will need to either stop those habits, the bad habits that you used to have, or stick to the drug. You know, I never say anybody that you have to stay on this forever, but you can stop it. And if you can go without it and you can maintain the weight loss, be my guest. Nobody's forcing you to stay on any medication at all, right? So we use medications as a supplementary, right? So. Same thing with herbal uh, preparations, same thing with anything you use extra to help your appetite, your diabetes, whatever. So let's open this up. Let's see what is in there. So I sneak this out. Uh, well, I, not, not me, the, the, the wrap. So nobody has samples yet. I didn't have a sample in my office yet. But I told the drug rep, I said, look, you know, my my viewers are gonna be like wondering about this they're gonna eventually hear it on tv and all that and they're gonna be like doc what what about this here's the deal that is the box it comes in a four pen now what is the difference the difference from ozempic that it is not a multi-use pen they made this super easy and i'm gonna actually try to show you over here maybe i can put it right there now what they did is this is a single use pen 0.25 milligram is the starting dose and it goes all the way up to 2.4 and you increase the dose once a month and the reason for that is the side effects which we'll talk about in a second so you basically i don't even know how to use this pen by the way you know just to be honest oh there you go <laughs> you just remove the cap you know uh common sense and then i think oh there's the needle there don't look <laughs> Don't look, uh, but they, they hit it pretty well. But if you really look and don't get too close to your eye, <laughs> but it's there. Anyways, um, I think it's smaller than Trulicidin needle. Anyways, this Trulicidin needle is humongous. All right, so I'm gonna push this just like that. This is your skin, this is your belly. And then you go, you don't actually push here. You basically push the whole thing against yourself, against your body, bam. And then you hold it and it delivers the you see, can see the, the liquid is going in. And I think, oh yeah, I can see it's all wet here. <laughs> all right, so, and you can see it's yellow after it's complete. You can see that it's all delivered and you are pretty much done. And now what happens? Now you, you got the injection, now you're like, well, what did I do? <laughs> What's gonna happen? Am I gonna die? No, I don't think so. I think you will be just fine. Now, what's gonna happen is, you will have probably some nausea, especially within the first 48 hours, okay? Now, some people, they're gonna be like, uh, nothing happened to me. It, again, everybody is different, right? So, you can be big, you can be small, you can be a high metabolizer, low metabolizer. Some people may have severe side effects that is pretty much a minority. I would say, you know, people who are like vomiting and stuff, is probably in my experience with semaglutide which is the ozempic the other drug 
with that dose in my experience is like maybe three percent or so you know i don't even remember the last time somebody vomited on these very elderly individuals are more susceptible you know people are on multiple drugs let's say some people are on like 20 30 drugs and that's like a 31st drug you know that may be a problem right but overall it's pretty well tolerated and the good thing is the nausea tends to go away now what other side effects well it's a gastrointestinal hormone right it's, it's like a new guy in the block you know you already have some gastrointestinal hormone and this guy is coming to your body and saying what to do so that's not welcomed always by your body and um, you end up getting some maybe diarrhea abdominal pain can happen but people tolerate this pretty well and the reason is they lose damn weight so <laughs> when people lose weight they can take anything so but the thing is they also you know that tends to go away let's say you have a little bit of abdominal pain you go for the second shot third shot by the fourth shot most of the time the, the the side effects go away unless they are super severe if you have just really severe side effects i wouldn't increase the dose i would stick to the same dose and maybe stay on the lower dose until the the, the side effects go away but definitely they tend to go away now what other side effects now uh, occasionally people report headaches uh, people sometimes report fatigue and people report all sorts of things uh but not common stuff you know people they may say oh i, I hallucinated uh, i highly doubt that it is from this medication because it's not really reported but i don't tell people that you're lying or anything i'm like, okay well if you think that causes hallucination then it causes hallucination what can i say <laughs> but the but in real studies with the placebo controlled studies you know i can tell you that the nausea abdominal pain diarrhea sometimes or constipation headaches fatigue are most common now who should not be using this drug at all well there's something called medullary thyroid cancer and and the pancreatic cancer now pancreatic cancer is kind of uncommon and medullary thyroid cancer is even more uncommon now don't confuse the medullary thyroid cancer with the regular thyroid cancer because the regular thyroid cancer is everywhere so medullary thyroid cancer is a unique type of cancer We're very rarely seen it's like a one in a million kind of situation but if you have a family history of it you know maybe you should stay away from this because the animal studies show that the rat studies uh that the cancer medullary thyroid cancer risk may go high or pancreatic cancer risk can go high so if you have pancreatic cancer in your family or medullary thyroid cancer definitely stay away from that but if you don't have any history your risk increase is going to be dismal i would say now the other thing is pancreatitis so if you had pancreatitis in the past especially if, if you don't know the origin why you had pancreatitis there are a few more cases out of a few thousand patients with pancreatitis pancreas inflammation which is presenting with severe abdominal pain and it can radiate to the back uh, it can end up with vomiting and abdominal pain together so if you have those symptoms go to er but as i said you know this is something again very rare i don't even remember again last time i had a pancreatitis with ozempic but i hear that sometimes you know people start on you know semaglutide uh, or other glp1 agents and end up with pancreatitis rarely that that's not unheard of retinopathy is another one that's reported so if you have an active eye disease like let's say you have bleeding in your eye because of diabetes the retina blood vessels have some glp1 receptors and blood sugar changes also can induce that there is a slight increase in progressive retinopathy not that if you if you have mild retinopathy or no retinopathy like eye disease diabetic eye disease it wouldn't cause problems according to studies but if you have progressive retinopathy you know, bleeding already in your eye and stuff like that then it may make it a little bit worse potentially not for sure but potentially can make it a little bit more worse so these are the side effects guys but definitely the the weight loss is so far the best in the market and if you want to try what you have to do is you need to talk to your doctor if you have a private insurance not a medicare or medicaid in the united states i'm talking about you can talk to your doctor to order that for you it goes to a special pharmacy it is i don't know the deal because 
the the way the the company operates is they they told us that it has to go to a special pharmacy because sometimes using those coupons are like you know pulling teeth uh and the pharmacies are sometimes confused what to do so they try to centralize uh that so you know only a few pharmacies in your neighborhood may be doing that so your physician will probably know where to send it but in any ways guys uh, this is by no means to promote this drug um the best weight loss is to work with your diet and exercise if you have a diabetes coach these are the best ways if you have a weight loss coach do it yourself is the best option but if your efforts of do it yourself have failed you tried also diets and you're not going anywhere sometimes you gotta pull the trigger and do something about it because it's your health instead of just staying overweight and unhealthy you have to do something about it so guys Make sure you do the quiz below to show, to prove that you have learned something and to win my chapter from my diabetes book and maybe potentially the entire book if you win enough times. See you next time. Give a thumbs up, like and share. All right. Thank you for watching and I want you to be more informed and more educated. So to do that, go ahead and watch this next video right here.